Hello everybody. Uh, yesterday uh, we made an introduction to the virtual memory and paging. Uh, we said that uh, uh, among the uh, problems of the other methods there were problems with allocation and efficiency. Uh, due to fragmentation we couldn't use some of the memory parts. From time to time we had to compact our memory, relocate uh, processes. Uh, and uh, one of the important things was uh, 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 we we had to we had to do the swapping ourselves uh, with the overlay approach. Otherwise, the swapping has to be done for the whole uh, process memory, etc. We said that uh, paging is going to solve all of these problems. Uh, it's a very uh, nice solution, but of course, paging doesn't come free. You need lots of help from the hardware, especially in the memory management unit. Memory management unit translates each memory reference from a virtual address to a physical address. And this is how it is done. Uh, each process would think that they have their own virtual address space. In this simple example, uh, the virtual address space for a process is 64 Ks. The, the process can address any part of this virtual address space as it likes but in reality every time I make a reference to this uh, memory location either reading those locations or modifying them each address is translated to physical addresses by the MMU and uh, this table this shape this this figure uh, here uh, uh, shows this process uh, every time I get a virtual address, it is translated into a physical memory address. And my process actually doesn't know about doesn't know where that where that data lives on the physical memory. All it knows is the virtual uh, addresses. Okay, and there is no way to know it unless you have the uh, uh, kernel privileges. In that case, you can look up your uh, pro, uh, page table and figure out where your exact uh, where your exact address is in the physical memory but you don't have to uh, because those things are abstracted from you you don't need to know details of where, where your pages live in the memory so the advantages are many your processes doesn't have to be contiguously located in the memory your virtual address space is contiguous but it's virtual in reality nothing is contiguous your pages uh, can be ordered in any way. There could be gaps between them. Okay. Uh, and some of the pages may not be loaded in the memory. And uh, 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 some of them might be still on the desk. And you will not realize that this is happening for your processes. Everything will uh, uh, work like you have a single machine. You have a CPU. You have very large memory space. And you can do whatever you want with your virtual address space. Okay, uh, good. So that's the that's the uh, that's the main idea, and we talked about this. Uh, so the definitions, a little bit definitions, uh, kind of doing an overview here. Each of these pages are called virtual pages, okay, and the size of the virtual pages are always uh, a, a power of two. It is either uh, two to the power ten, two to the power eleven, twelve, whatever. So it could be each page could be. 512 bytes or 1 kilobyte or 2 kilobyte or 4 or 8 16 it goes that way okay because each page has to be 2 to the power some integer and this integer could be uh, 9 10 11 it goes like that okay and these are called virtual pages the page that corresponds to these virtual pages in the physical memory are called page frames okay and of course they are the same size some of the virtual pages directly map into the physical memory some of them they don't have any corresponding ones so they are not loaded in the physical memory okay good uh, uh, we talked about this the, the virtual pages and the page frames and this was a this was an example where we did the address translation from virtual address space to the physical addresses remember this offset this offset part, which corresponds to these 12 bits, 
12 bits is the to the power 12 is the size of the uh, uh, pages, right? Virtual pages or page frames. So 12 bits is enough for, to address the uh, any place in a page. And this part, this part, before the 12 bits, this four bits is is used for addressing your virtual page. So since pages are virtual here, I need to translate this virtual page into physical page frame number. So this is done using this page table. Of course, this page table is simplified. In this case, in this page table, uh, there are corresponding for each virtual page. Okay, there is a corresponding uh, page frame number, and some of them are some of them are not valid. Some of them are not valid. It is saying that I don't have a corresponding page frame in the physical memory because those pages are not loaded. Okay, so. One thing is the corresponding page frame. The other thing is this: if this address is valid or not. And remember, we had a modified bit, reference bit, and etc. So a page table is somewhere. It is it is crowded, and it 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 includes lots of useful useful data. Okay, and uh, uh, this is exactly doing the same thing in the previous figure. Okay. I, if I have a virtual address A, I divide this into two, a V, okay, virtual page number, and O is the offset within the page, V and O. O is 12 bits in this uh, example, in our example. V is just four bits. So since it is four, that means that two to the four is there are, there are 16 possible virtual pages. Okay, so all I need to do is translate this 4-bit number into a 3-bit physical frame number because our physical frames, okay, there are total of how many physical frames do I have in this case? Okay, I think we have 8, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yes, 8. So 3 bits enough. So what am I going to do is translate this 4-bit information to 3-bit information. And this is done by this lookup, just table lookup, just indexing, okay? There is a table, page table, use V as an index in this page table, get the number, and this number is 3 bits now. Now our physical address is 3 bits plus 12 bits, 15 bits. 15 bits physical. Previously it used to be 16 bit, 16 bit uh, virtual address, okay? And uh, last time we also said that the page table entries are not this simple. They are more complicated. Okay. This is a page table entry. So in this case, I have only the corresponding, the physical page frame number and the validity bit, valid or not. In fact, we have more than that. What do we have here? Okay. Page frame number, present absent. Okay. The protection bits. Okay. Is that page a read read only page or write only page read write page executable page? These are there. Okay. If I am trying to write to a page that is not writable, then uh, then uh, th there will be a hardware tra hardware uh, interrupt or trap, and hardware will tell the operating system that this process is trying to write to a page uh, that is not writable. Okay. So again, we get some hardware help. Modified bit and the reference bit are important, very important. Modified bit says that this page that you are referring to is modified. Okay. If you are going to, if you are going to, if you, if you, if you don't need this page anymore, and if you need the space uh, of that page for some other page, you need to write this page back to the desk because this page is modified. If that page is not modified, then you don't have to write it back. You can just simply ignore that page, just simply erase it from your memory. Reference bit means that this page is read by somebody. Somebody has read it. Somebody has uh, accessed this page. And that means that this is being used by somebody. So this page is busy. That's kind of what it means. Why is this important? It is important because you like to keep your reference pages in your memory. 
okay you like to keep your modified pages in your memory because if somebody modified it or if somebody referenced it it is possible that they are going to reference it again if a page is not referenced or modified then that's a very good candidate to swap out that's a very good candidate to swap out because nobody is uh, doing reading it or referencing it okay some pages are uh, designed in a way that you don't want to cache them okay you don't want this page to be in the cache why might this be maybe maybe you don't want this maybe maybe that page is being updated by some other processors okay and if you put it in a cache that's going to uh, that's going to compromise the integrity of that page and etc so this is possible too uh, this figure is not complete depending on the hardware and the operating system there might be many other things that could be that could be included in the page table entry mmu page table entry for different um, for different hardwares okay and this kind of shows it okay the previous any, any questions so far so i made a 10 minute review of what i said last time any questions so far up to this point so again that's a very nice solution this paging very nice solution invented in 1960s again uh, it it solves lots of problems but again you need to have help from the hardware mmu mmu needs to store mmu needs to keep this kind of a page table and it so it needs a uh, memory okay fast registers very fast registers so that means it is going to be expensive so cheap cpus of uh, 1980s and 1990s didn't have this kind of a support okay so it wasn't it wasn't possible for them to have this kind of sophisticated paging uh, based uh, memory abstraction methods for those uh, for those for those uh, cpus and the operating systems later they started supporting these okay maybe uh, you could just type structure of the structure of the um, page table in x64 just a single line maybe if i am lucky i am going to get a yeah i think this is page table entry page table entry for can i go in there page directory entry is like this make it larger a little bit okay so this is page table aligned address this is the this is the physical address and g is ignored s is page size so this is a bit z if if is z if it is zero it is four kilobytes i think if it is not zero it is one maybe it is one kilobyte i don't know or what is this is with what is this i don't know what is access means that it is referenced cache disabled right through okay we'll talk about right through and the user supervisor page read write okay bit and the present bit so it is not that different that, that different than what we had but i think this is not talking about intel this is not talking about intel stuff is it talking about intel stuff okay it is just you just look it up just look look up what kind of yeah yeah it is 30, 32 bit processor stuff um and this is the pentium virtual address Pentium virtual address we are going to Pentium based virtual addresses we are going to look at it it's more complicated 
It is not that difficult, but it includes some other stuff. So if you look at the real real processors tables, uh, this one, this one is our desk transition. Yeah. Okay. This one is a little bit more complicated because this is the page table entry, and this page table is not kept in the page frame number. Resort global resort dirty dirty is modified access caching right through on yeah, it is almost the same thing anyway so this this doesn't mean that this is a complete page table entry and it depends on the processor type and the operating system what kind of information you are using okay but this approach is too simple because see we don't have 64 kilobytes of virtual memories anymore. Virtual memories for a 32-bit environment is as large as 2 to the power 32. So how much is that? Okay. 10 is kilobyte, megabyte, 20, 30 is gigabyte. And then that means that it is 4 gigabytes. So... For a 32-bit computer, it is 4 gigabytes of virtual memory. Okay, 4 gigabytes of virtual memory. For a 64-bit computer, it is this much. I don't know how much it is. Okay, so it is very large. And remember, the 32-bit computers are uh, more than 15 years old. Nobody had 1 gigabyte of memory like 10 years ago. Okay, uh, uh, nowadays we have 8, 16 gigabytes are common because our processes are now 64 bits now, but 4 gigabytes of memory, okay? And the page sizes are, what is my page size? If my memory is, okay, if, let me do the calculation where, let me do the calculation, <laughs> Okay, better. If my virtual memory is this much, okay, and my page sizes are still 4 kilobytes, you have seen it, right? So that means that how many pages, how many virtual pages do I have in my virtual memory? I have 2 to the 20, right? So 1 million, more than 1 million more than 1 million pages I have. So my page table size, my page table will contain more than 1 million entries. And there is no way that I can fit, I can fit those 1 million. Where is that? There is no way that I can fit those 1 million lines in, in my MMU. I don't have that kind of space in MMU. MMU space is expensive. Uh, any 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 memory that you use in MMU should be small because it is a very fast memory. It is expensive to build. One million lines of tables is not possible in these one. And we are talking about the 32-bit processes. We are not talking about the 64 bits. In 64 bits, it is even uh, uh, even even worse. Okay. So what are we gonna do? The idea is this. We talked about this uh, last time. We said that. We said that we need to we need to be quick, okay. Whenever we do a memory referencing, virtual memory referencing, this address translation should be quick. That's why I cannot keep this page table in my main memory because if I keep the page table in my main memory, okay. If I keep the if I keep the page table, which is this one, in my main memory. To be able to produce a physical address, I have to go to main memory and make this lookup. That lookup is expensive in the main memory. Okay, I cannot do that. That's that's going to make my uh, whole op computer system hundreds of times slower than uh, the alternatives. That I cannot accept it. But if I cannot keep this large table in my MMU. So what we do? The solution is like we talked. The solution is. Let's use some kind of a cache memory for the 
page table okay i am not going to keep all the elements of the page table in my mmu but i am going to use uh, keep only a small part of it a most frequently used part of it okay the same as the cache idea because all the programs tend to exhibit the locality of reference okay uh, whenever a process is working on some data and working on some instructions, usually the accesses are local. If you access the memory location, it is possible that you are going to access it again. If you access the memory location, it is very possible that you are going to access the neighbors of those memory locations. Okay, so that's the idea. That's why they invented this translation look aside buffer. Uh, as always, with the cache buffers, cache memories, TLB is an associative memory. Uh, that means instead of accessing the values of associative memories with an index, it maps a value to another value. Okay, it maps a value to another uh, value. So you give the virtual page number, okay, it finds it in the memory and it gives you the corresponding physical frame back if it has it if it doesn't have it then it is going to say that it's a mess okay that's the thing with the caches right it is either hit or mess you like to have all the hits all the time that's the good uh, part that you like but from time to time you are going to get a mess you are going to get you're going to get uh, a, a thing like I don't have this I don't have this page table in the TLB okay so in in short MMUs doesn't contain the whole MMUs doesn't contain the whole page tables it contains only the TLB and the size of the TLB is small it is not millions of lines of uh, table entries it is maybe thousands okay it is maybe thousands okay so but uh, like the caches on many systems TLB is managed by the hardware but on risk systems it is explicitly populated by the operating system that's why we are looking at the TLB inside the TLB it is very similar to a page table okay this is what a TLB uh, uh, looks like and each line okay in this case in my TLB there are one, two, three, four, eight entries. Okay, it's a very small uh, translation look inside buffer. And how does the looking up uh, done? So this is the virtual page. You ask this uh, TLB, do you have the page number 140? It says, yes, I have it. What is the corresponding page frame? It is 31. Now I have it. Now I can replace this 140 with 31 right and uh, i add this 31 the binary representation of 31 to the beginning of the page offset and that will be my physical physical address and of course i have the modified bit and it's, this one doesn't include the reference bit and but the reference bit are common too and i have the protection so some pages are read write pages some some pages are only execution pages uh, so most probably, yeah, tell me, what kind of page is this? Where, where Can you tell me uh, for what purpose I am using this page? And can you tell me for what purpose I am using this page? Reading yeah, that's what it writes there. But yeah, tell me what kind of page is that? It is probably... It is probably... It is probably data page. It data. Yes. data, right? Yeah, I am modifying it. I am reading and writing. This one is instruction page. Along. Yeah, this is an instruction page. You are just, you are just, well, and it is not possible to modify this, see? And it, they are not modified. They cannot be one because it is read and execute. So that's the nice thing about the instruction pages. You don't have to write them back. You load them, but you don't have to write them back to the uh, write them back to the um, uh, to the to the to the uh, desk. 
Okay. Any questions? Okay, let me continue if there are no questions. As we said before, uh, many risk machines do nearly all of this page management in, in software. So I said task of the operating system uh, to, to make the maintenance of this page. And the, the idea for the risk is, you know that, right? The idea of the risk computers are keep your CPU simple, okay? Don't include complicated instructions. Don't try to handle these kind of tables in hardware. Instead, okay, give me lots of registers. Give me lots of cache space. And I will do the optimizations in software. And I will develop specialized compilers for that kind of, an, uh, for that kind of hardware. Okay, that's the idea of risk. And it turns out that this is a very nice idea. Everybody is using these ideas nowadays. Okay, so it's a much simpler MMU in terms of hardware, but it includes a considerable amount of area for the cache space and the uh, TLB space. For the software TLB management, these are the things that can occur. Okay, if I am looking up a number, okay, let's let's look at go there. I asked this, do you have 140? It says that yes. So it's a hit. We like it. Okay. It's a hit. We like it. You, I have this um, uh, page and it's page frame number 31 and I, I did that. Okay. If this TLB doesn't have the page, what could that mean? Okay. It could mean that the TLB doesn't have this page, but the page table in my main memory has it. Okay, so the idea is this is my CPU and inside my CPU, inside my MMU, I have this TLB. This one is connected to my main memory and inside my main memory there is my page table. This page table is huge. More than a million uh, lines of entries in there. But TLB is just eight of them are there, eight, just eight lines. If I can find the, if I can find the page in this TLB, I am fine. Otherwise, I am going to go to the main memory and find the page, page, the, the, the page, physical page that I am looking at. If I find it, then I am going to use that number uh, to update the TLB. And I am going to use the number to make my, to create my, address physical address and and if this page table says that i don't have a physical address uh, physical frame address for that entry it is not loaded in the main memory then i have to load it from the desk okay i have to load that page from the from the uh, desk and here i have those pages in my main memory come on Okay. For some reason, when it is too magnified, yeah, these are my pages. And each one is pointing to somewhere. This one is here and this one is there. And some of them are crosses. Okay, some of them are crosses. I don't I did not load them okay they will be loaded from you so it is more complicated to, 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 to handle one single page table but it is very efficient okay so we are solving this problem of uh, address realization should be fast yeah most of the time when you had the hits it is fast also uh, address translation should be able to handle millions of pages and if I keep my data on main memory I can I can I can handle that too and these are the things soft miss is when the page reference is not in the TLB but is in the memory it's just a few nanoseconds I can handle it it's called soft mess it's a miss for the TLB but it's not a miss for the page table in the memory a hard miss is this hard miss occurs when the page itself is not in the memory 
okay a hard miss say that okay the the item that i'm looking at is not in the trb the item that i'm looking at is not in the is not in the uh, 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 page table okay the page table say that i don't have that page then in that case it's a hard mess okay hard mess maybe we can categorize this hard mess into okay two in the minor page fault when 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 there is a hard mess this means it's a page fault page fault means that i don't have that page in my memory and i need to load it but if we are lucky it's a minor page fault minor page fault is this the page may be actually in the main memory but not in this processes page table remember each process has its own page table and sometimes especially for the code instructions especially for the instructions some pages are shared let me try to draw this let's say this is my process number one page table page table of p1 okay and this is the page table of p2 process number two and this is my physical memory okay since uh, process number one and process number two they have to run some instructions sometimes sometimes they might use the they might use the same pages to refer to those instructions okay sometimes they may share pages since the instruction pages are since the instruction pages are read only there is no race condition in this case they are just sharing those pages so soft miss happens this case that page may not be in my page table but the uh, uh, but the the page is loaded in the main memory it is used by some other process that's called the page fault i don't have to load anything from the uh, desk all i am doing is just updating my page table that's good if that is not the case it's a major page fault okay the page has to be loaded from the from the desk and that's going to take milliseconds uh, milliseconds as you see nanoseconds microseconds and milliseconds uh, we are talking about millions of times of difference okay so it is it is it is it is a lot slow because we are going to go to the desk either a mechanical desk or a ssd a kind of solid state drive kind of stuff it is it is slow okay and then we have the segmentation fault segmentation fault is this uh, i am trying to access page faults can happen let's say this is zero address 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 zero 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 to address two to the 32 okay okay th these are my addresses segment if i try to access any part of this virtual address space i am fine i can do whatever i want but the windows operating system says that for a regular process you could use only the top part of this memory so uh, from 0 to 0 to 2 gigabytes of memory it is reserved for the operating system and uh, up to from from two gigabyte to four gigabytes it is a process's memory so if you try to if you try to access if you try to access somewhere in the first part of the memory then you will get a segmentation fault the program simply accessed an invalid address that that address in your not in your address space you should not access it so that's called segmentation fault okay any questions 
So nobody had asked me any questions today. Could I repeat what tables again? Monitor tables? No. No. Minor page faults. What is Minor that? page fault? Yes. You you know you understand the major page fault. The page is not in the memory and I have to load it from the desk. Minor yes. page fault is this. Minor page fault is this. Let's say let's say this is an X. I don't have that page. I don't have that page. Uh, uh, in this in my page table and this process tries to read uh, some instruction from this page and when I look at it okay this page table says that f f first of all if I have a hard mess okay if I have a hard mess that means that the table that I am looking at is not in the table definitely okay and uh, the table that I am looking at uh, is not in my page table, but that doesn't mean that I will have to load that uh, page from the disk all the time. The This page, okay, the, the page that I am trying to reach in the physical memory might be there, okay, because let's say GCC compiler, okay, I am going to use GCC compiler with this one and GCC compiler with this one. This one is already using the GCC compiler. Okay. So it loaded it loaded lots of instructions from the GCC compiler. Maybe GCC compiler wasn't a good uh, let's talk about DLL. Okay. This one needs some data uh, from a DLL, a dynamic link library. Okay. Uh, maybe some instructions from that DLL. And it needs to load it because it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have it right now. But this process already loaded that DLL, and it is using it. So even though the in the process table of this process, the, the sorry page table of this process, it looks like it doesn't have the page. That page is available in the memory. All it needs to do is just point it with a pointer like that. So you don't have to load anything from the desk. And this might happen, as I said before, this might happen uh, if these two processes are sharing pages. And page sharing is commonly done uh, on modern operating systems. So the operating system does this kind of stuff, right? Uh, for example, a process one cannot know uh, the data that it search, is searching for. It is really in the memory well i mean as a programmer you don't know about the pages right you write your yeah. code in a way that you think that you have the whole address space in your hand and you can do whatever you want and all the loading of the pages okay writing them back to the desk uh, uh, handling of the page folds and etc it is all handled by the operating system of course that's what we call the abstraction of the memory are dead spaces you don't think about them as programmers so you live in a virtual memory world you live in a virtual cpu world okay your virtual memory is your address space and your virtual cpu is your processes okay there are two main abstractions of the operating systems processes and the virtual memory or address spaces you don't think about those pages. You don't think about what kind of page should I share with the other processes. Because when you write your programs, you don't think about the other programs, other processes. So is there any information on the page pages that indicate uh, more than one process will need this kind of those uh, pages? You mean as, as, as a user, can you know that? Is that what you are saying? As a user, regular user, can you know that you are sharing that data with somebody else? Yeah. You don't have to. I don't think that operating system will let you know that. But there are always hacky stuff. Because knowing those kind of 
knowing those kind of information about the other processes are security loopholes. Uh, you may use this information to hack what the, to hack the other processes. If you know that you are sharing that instruction page with some other process, you kind of know what the other process is doing, right? What kind of procedure it is it is it is it is running. And suppose that you are doing this on a server, a CPU server, on an Amazon server. By learning these kind of stuff, you may know what the other processes are doing on the same server. That would be a very bad security security loophole. Yes. Uh, you said we live in a virtual world and programming. Uh, what we do is every, everything is virtual in the uh, in the pages. Uh, is it possible for us to really reach the uh, physical side of the uh, memory, uh, the address address spaces? That's what I am. What I was saying. I mean, depending on the operating system, the 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 regular tendency is prevent users from knowing that kind of information. That's a privileged information. You are not supposed to know it and you are not supposed to modify it. Page tables, you cannot access the page tables. You cannot see the page tables. Unless you are in the kernel mode. Okay. Thank you. For a robust operating system, it should completely you should completely prevent you from accessing this kind of sensitive information. As I said, if you can access it, you know, you know uh, what pages the other processes are using, etc. Okay, good. So, uh, just type on Google: Is it possible to access the page table from a regular process? And you will get the and you will get the results. For Windows and Linux. Okay, go back and I think I I think I added this from from Wikipedia, maybe. I don't know where I get it. So the software TLB management. When I get a virtual address, a virtual address, okay, it has two parts, V and A, right? So V is the part of the uh, virtual page number, A is the uh, Offset, so it is V and O, right? V and O. So this is 12 bits. This is maybe uh, 28 bits for, or uh, maybe 30 bits for a 30 bit, 32 bit operating system. So I'm going to replace this with P and O, right? So for the physical memory. Start. CPU checks the TLB or MMU checks the TLB. If I am in, okay, check the TLB. If the page table entry is in the TLB, then I am done. I just, I just take that P and I append it at the beginning of O and I generate the physical address. So this is the, this is, this one is green and I like this one. I like this green path. It's a hit, okay. But if the page table, if the if that address is not in the TLB, then I access the page table, which is in the main memory. If the page is in the main memory, then of course I load that entry in my TLB. Maybe I need to take somebody out. And uh, I update my TLB and I generate my physical address and that's it. So this part, the second part, which is which I am going to uh, show it with blue maybe is the second preferable one if the page is not in the main memory then I need to ask the operating system to load the page from the disk okay ask the hardware okay and get the uh, page from the disk if the memory is full what does that mean if all the page frames are uh, filled in they are not available I need to do a page replacement. Write a page from the main memory to the disk. If it's a modified uh, page, 
then I have to write it. If it's not a modified page, then I, have, I don't have to write it. Okay, and I do the page replacement and I update my page tables and I go back to the, I go back to the uh, beginning uh, CPU start checking the stuff and this time it's going to go through. So this is the red path and we don't like this uh, red, especially this part is even more red, right? We don't like this red path. Okay. And these are some typical numbers for the TLBs. I think I got this from a 32-bit processor numbers. Okay. So the TLB sizes here, each entry is 12 bits. Okay. Each entry is 12 bits. And there are uh, 4K entries. So the size of the TLB is this much. Hit time is very, very, very uh, fast. So in a less than a clock cycle, you get your results from the TLB. So you are not losing any time at all. It is done in a shorter amount than the clock cycle. For, but for the miss penalty is 10 to 100 clock cycles. That means that if I miss something from the TLB, I need to go to the main memory. I need to load it. Okay. And we are still talking about this blue line here. Okay. Uh, when process goes to red road, uh, the process put, that, uh, put itself to ready queue or it's still running? It cannot be in the ready because if I am asking, how, if I am, if the operating system asks the hardware to load some data from the disk, that process cannot be ready. That process is blocked. So other process may uh, take the charge, then isn't it a possibility that uh, other process always uh, overwrite the, the uh, data that we try to read? Yeah, that's a, that's a problem. I mean, uh, I am trying to, one, one thing is this, while I am trying to well, first of all, the data is not in the the data is not in the um, memory, so nobody can write to it. If it is in the memory, then I don't have to load it from the desk, right? So what I am meeting, you might say that if I have locked some some uh, lock some mutex, and if I am trying to load some access some. If I am trying to access some other memory location and I cause the uh, page lock, uh, page fault, and I am waiting for some data, and if somebody is trying to enter the mutual access region, but they cannot because I already locked it, so all the other processes have to wait it. So you are saying that I cause the page fault and that's going to cause some race condition. No, it cannot happen if the things, all the things are written correctly. But this could happen. I need a page. It is not in the memory. So I am waiting for it to be available. Okay. While I am waiting, while I am blocked, some other process has run. Okay. And it caused the page for two. And now it is blocked and it is waiting for uh, the data. Okay. And uh, there is no, there is no place. There is no space available in my main memory. I have to swap, swap something out. So I keep swapping the other processes page. Okay. So I am loading, I am loading my page and some other process is swapping it out. Okay. So that's a problem. I, this is not a race condition, but uh, this is a condition where if the memory is not enough, you keep swapping out the other processes, uh, important pages, and they are doing the same thing too. That's called memory trashing memory trashing okay trashing is a very uh, bad problem for systems where there is not enough memory and you are running too many processes okay sometimes i hear people saying that uh, uh, i don't know what that means but i think they 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 refer to this trashing 
hafıza şişti. People have invented these terms, but they are using it loosely. Most of the time, if your system is slow to respond, you are trashing. Okay. You are running too many processes. Each process is swapping out the other processes pages. And when the time comes, the other process is doing the same thing to the other one. So what is the solution? Solution is kill some of the processes or add more memory, system memory to the computer. Okay, any questions? Okay, it looks like I am out of time for the first part of the lecture. Uh, let me take 10 minutes of break. After the break, we will continue. So let's be here around 12.32.
Okay, so this is the this is the case. Uh, we talked about uh, the page tables being in the main memory, but uh, the problem is this. Okay, uh, if the virtual address space is very large, your page table is going to be very large too. Okay, if the page table is very large, then I cannot fit it in my main memory. It is it is becoming too too large, and most of the page table entries are not used anyway. Uh, so I, I I I have to keep a very large amount of data in my kernel space. By the way, okay, and uh, we don't we don't like it. So they developed this multi-level page table idea, okay, very large virtual address space. So I am not going to keep my whole page table in as a as a single page table but i am going to i am going to keep it as multi level page tables this is what i mean okay um for a 32 bit computer okay the addresses are uh, 32 bits of course okay but we have two virtual page uh, uh, numbers. The first one is PT1, the second one is PT2. Okay, and of course I have an offset. Uh, since offset is 12 bits, that means that it's a 4K page sizes. Okay, so with this kind of with this kind of virtual addresses, I use this 10 bits, the beginning 10 bits, to make a lookup into a page table, and of course since this is 10 bits. It is 2 to the power 10, the size. So it is 1024 elements in this uh, page table. Okay. I make a lookup. And lookup says that, okay, let's say, uh, lookup says that, uh, uh, let's say uh, my first 10 bits is, okay, it is 0, 1, 1, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten bits. So let's say my first ten bits is this. So it is six. I look at this one. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I I, I found my entry here. And that entry will will transfer me to one of the other tables, like maybe this one okay or why don't i use the regular thing why don't i use this one right so this is zero and one and so six i am going to use zero zero and one so it is pointing to this one this one i found my entry in this top level page table and this one is going to give me another page table of size again uh, 1023 address number okay so i am going to use this second bit to make a lookup into second 10 bit to make a lookup into this second page table okay so i am going to use this 10 bits to make a lookup into this table the second 10 bits is going to be uh, used for making another lookup. So how many, how many second level page tables do I have in this case? How many second level page tables do I have? How many first top level page table do I have? Just one, right? How many second levels do I have? to the power of 10 by this 
Yeah, two to the power ten. So this is more than one thousand. It's one thousand twenty four of them, right? So it is. It is the number is very high, right? The number is very high. So each one two to the power ten of them, and each one includes two to the power ten entries. So total of two to the power twenty entries. Okay, one one mega element of uh, one mega elements of uh, uh, table in total plus plus one page here okay and from this one from this one when i make a lookup it will give me the real it will give me the real uh, page that i am looking at and then i would use and then i would use these two apples to make a offset inside this page okay so that's the idea of multi-level page tables so what is the advantage of it why am i doing this what what problem am i solving i am trying to solve the page tables are being too large right so how did this solve the problem I mean, the total amount of page table size did not change. So previously, my virtual page number used to be 20 bits. Instead, I divided it into 10 bits and 10 bits. It used to be 2 to the power 20 elements in the main page table. Now it is, okay, 2 to the power 10. It is very small, but if I count the secondary level page tables, the total memory is the same a little bit more so what is the advantage of this approach well less searching time yes less search no it is not no no it is it is i mean this is indexing right when you are doing the table indexing array indexing there is no search time the search time is all one all one search time here and all one search time there it's total of all one and we are trying we are not trying to solve this speed problem with this kind of an approach we are trying to solve the memory too large memory problem well well by doing this uh we just we don't need to set a specific address to a uh, memory so with this approach we just uh, toss toss our data into into a uh, page yeah so we i used to do the same what is the difference i mean i used to do this i used to do it the same way i mean it doesn't matter if i have if i have an address like this 32 bits 12 bits is the offset okay 22 bits is the 20 bits is for the virtual page number and i would use this 20 bits to make a lookup in a 2 to the power 20 element large page table. Whatever I can do with this one, I can do with this one. But what is the advantage of this approach? Multi-level page tables in terms of addressing the problem of page tables being too large. When the contacts which happen, they only need the smaller table to top. Table. Yeah. Top table is always in the memory, yeah. And continue. Top table has always have to be in the memory and small, yes. But I have to keep all these tables in the memory? No, right? I only keep the ones that are used by the top table in the memory. Again, the locality principle, remember? Okay. Most of the time, I keep using the same second-level page tables. I don't have to keep all of these pages in the memory. I will keep most of them on my desk. And in fact, I can page them in and out. These could be my pages, right? I can page them in and out. So that's called multi-level page tables. So overall, the size of the page table doesn't change. But this gives me a very nice way of keeping most of my page table on a desk. 
So I can have a miss in here. The, the number, the first lookup, this red one, the first lookup might produce an address that doesn't, that does not exist in the memory. So I have to load some of these page tables from the secondary storage, from the desk. It makes it a little bit slow. Yeah, that's true, because I need to do the disk I.O. But uh, it is better than keeping all that data in my main memory. Multi-level page tables. Okay. Uh, I think this was the case for this old uh, processor, 8386. Okay. This 386 processor. It used to be, uh, I think it was the first Intel 32-bit uh, processor. Okay, in 1985, it was a revolutionary processor. It introduced lots of stuff. It introduced protection. It introduced uh, um, MMU and etc. Uh, and in that case, they had this kind of structure. Okay, 10 bits first level uh, page tables, 10 bits second level page tables, and 12 bits of offset. So a total of uh, four gigabytes of virtual address space. That was that was the uh, Intel uh, 386 processor. Ten years later, in in, in 1995, with the Pentium Pro, okay, with the Pentium Pro, this was the case. This is not like two level page tables. This is one, two, three, four levels of page tables. Four levels of page tables. Each, tab each, ta each page table is of size 512 elements, 512 lines, 512 lines, okay. Make a lookup, another lookup, another lookup, another lookup, then you are obsessed. So I can address up to 2 to the power 48, 2 to the power 48 uh, bytes of virtual address space, okay. Even today, we don't have such large main memories available for most of the computers. So what is this? Kilo, mega, giga, terabytes, and petabytes, right? So this is 256 terabytes of, 256 terabytes of virtual address space. And this was available in 1995. Okay, good. Any questions with the multi-level page tables? Again, we address the problem of having a very large page table. Maybe you might say that, well, this is okay. I can keep for the Pentium. Okay, I can keep, I can keep um, uh, four megabytes of four megabytes of data in my main memory. But in 1985, 4 megabytes of main memory is not uh, something that you say every day. That was too big memory, okay? It was larger than your main memory, so I, you cannot keep it in your main memory. You have to do something like that. Okay, if there are no questions, then I will, I will continue. They, are, they needed this much. Uh, terabytes of virtual memory so that they can use their real memory. Did I understand correctly? No, they designed their processor in a way that the virtual address space could be as large as this. Okay. The virtual address space could be as large as this. Uh, that is 4 gigabytes. In 1985, Gigabyte is something like today's petabytes. Okay, so that kind of main memory was not possible, even if you had the money. So why did they design it that way? They say that we are designing it in a, that, in a way that this kind of an architecture should be sufficient for at least 10 or 15 years. Okay, and it looks like it was only it was only enough for 10 years. Okay, because in 1995, they had to switch to this kind of a memory. 
uh, okay after 1995 things got a little bit slower and the Moore's law the Moore's law didn't uh, work uh, as well as before okay starting from 2000 it started things get starting slower and slower nowadays for the maybe 10 years we keep using four gigabytes of main memory right I mean we are not getting more memories uh, anymore so the incrementation is uh, very very little for the last especially five years I mean for the last three generations I keep buying exactly the same computer with the same amount of memory okay so that 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 was the idea because I mean uh, um, Bill Gates once said that Bill Gates once said that 256 kilobytes of main memory should be enough for everybody it is more than enough so they designed the original MS-DOS with this kind of uh, upper limit later they increased it to 640 kilobytes and that was way more than enough but no it was never enough so when they realized that memory is never enough that they, they did this kind of stuff so but this is too big i mean when if you are going to use virtual memory like that your virtual memory table will not fit in your main memory okay it is orders of magnitude larger than the main memory so this is the solution multi-level page tables and still we are using these multi-level page tables in today's 64-bit computers okay the somebody noticed this okay they say that they said that they said that if i have a 64-bit computer okay 64-bit computer uh, my addresses will be like this right 2 to the power 64 very large number if my pages are 2 to the power 12 this means that i should have 2 to the power 52 elements in my traditional page table is that true yeah so we are talking about the petabytes again so my my page table is petabytes right that's that's very big so what is nowadays uh, physical memory size let's say it is eight gigabytes i have only eight gigabytes of main memory so if it is 8 gigabytes what is 8 gigabyte 8 gigabyte is 2 to the power 30 uh, 33 is that true kilo mega giga yeah 2 to the power 33 is my physical memory size if again my page sizes are 12 that means that in my main memory there will be two to the power two to the power 21 pages right two to the power uh, 21 uh, pages like uh, two mega elements uh, in my in my physical uh, uh, other space that's in my physical in my physical memory so this is the number in my virtual address space the number of pages this is the real number of pages the difference is so big and i am trying to keep this kind of page tables and all of them are going to be addressed towards these 2 to the 21 numbers somebody said that let's invert this picture okay inverted page tables are this so i am going to do this instead of keeping such a large table I am going to keep a hash table okay hash table will be of size 2 to the power 21 whenever I need a new address a virtual address I will ask this page table do you have this address in you okay and uh, since I have one entry in this page table for each physical frame page frame each physical page frame will contain a virtual okay link list virtual page page frame list so i am using hashing to make this decision okay 
what is the what was the what was the case each of these each of these each of these elements are trying to point to somewhere in the main memory but there is not enough space okay so most of these pages will be will be marked with x's right i don't have them only very small amount of it will be available so the idea is why don't we invert invert these arrows from this page to that page that's called hashing okay so to this hash table i ask the question do you have this virtual address number okay it says that okay i'm going to i am going to give you a list and you can look up your virtual address in that list if i don't have it and you are going to say it in a very quick amount of time so this will although it is a little bit more difficult to look up your virtual addresses okay it is a little bit more difficult but it is much more efficient in terms of memory usage and you don't have to you don't have to keep uh, two level page tables three level page tables and etc and you are not going to get much help uh, from the hardware and this was one this was one this one was a solution to this problem inverted page tables okay any questions so what would be the advantage of this over multi-level page tables with the multi-level page tables you have to keep all this data somewhere either in your main memory or in the desk okay so it is 2 to the power 52 we are talking about now we are talking about 2 to the power 21 it is much smaller much smaller instead of talking about peta peta um, elements in a table we are talking about mega elements it will be much smaller okay thank you okay good any any other questions so these are the basic approaches for keeping the page tables tlb is definitely there okay keep reading about tlb uh, for different processor types especially for intel approach okay um, and you, you are going to know more about them uh, that's one thing um, other than that i will start talking about these page replacement algorithms i mean <clears throat> most of the time let's go back to our nice small simple picture again most of the time all of these pages will be will be occupied and whenever i need to load a new page i have to choose one of them i have to choose one of them uh, to replace it with something else okay so that's called the page replacement to do the page replacement i have to do this choosing how do i choose it which which page should i replace which page should i replace okay so i have to make this decision i have to make this decision so what is your idea which page should i replace i should replace the page that has such and such and such what would you say that is least used that is least used okay define least used maybe we can hold a new page a new page just I have loaded is used only once that means that it is the least used one should I just replace it no because it is new it is expected that it is used only once but since I loaded it uh, due to the locality principle I am going to use it again so the least used uh, if I define it that way that's not a good idea okay what are what are the other ideas okay yeah you, you mean that uh, first in first out whoever is the oldest yeah. whoever is the oldest right whoever is all the oldest uh, may i should i should replace it but 
if I keep using that, if I keep using that oldest one, I, it is old page, but I keep using it. Should I replace it? I mean, uh, it has, uh, it passed too much time that I didn't use it. Okay, so I need a way of measuring how long I did not use that page. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, for all the pages, the information about the pages are in the page table. And page table is somewhere very expensive. I cannot make it very large. And uh, for, 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 for your idea to be for your idea to be implementable, I need to keep track of the date or the time when I loaded the page. Okay, and the current time I need to make a subtraction. That might be a little bit expensive for a page because remember, how do you know that a page is used? How do you know a page is used? Whenever you made an access to the page, okay, you know that it is used, but Access means that the memory access, right? When you are doing the memory access, it is too expensive to go to the page table and make an update. That will require you to uh, make lots of memory accesses in your page table, and that will be thousands of times slower than, uh, than the version that doesn't use approach. You understand what I'm saying, Yasin? Yes, sir. Remember why we have invented the TLB? We invented the TLB because we like to make this address transition fast. But whenever whenever I access a page, I don't have the luxury of going that go to going to the page table and making lots of modification. That will require lots of memory accesses. So whatever algorithm you are going to give me, it should be very simple. It shouldn't it shouldn't it shouldn't make me go to the memory and update something. So just randomly select one and put it in. Yeah, randomly select one could be a solution uh, and you can measure its performance. Uh, but no, we can do... Yeah, well, you should definitely implement that approach. I mean, randomly select one and replace it. Why should I re implement it? Because any other ideas that I think it is better than random, I should compare it with the performance of the random replacement. And most of the time, most of the genius ideas turns out to be worse than the random random selection. Okay, so that would be a very ba good baseline algorithm to compare to. Okay, so we are going to talk about it, and whatever page replacement I should I should choose, I should design. It should be very fast. It should not go to the main memory, and if I need the hardware implementation. Uh, that implementation should be uh, should be very uh, should be very trivial. Okay, let's look at this latency numbers. Where is my page fault? Do I have the page fault? This is compress cache mutex lock. How come I don't have the page fault? I think there was a larger version of this table. And it was giving me the page fault numbers. Yeah. So what do you think the page fault? Okay. Hard page fault needs a sequence S SSD access. Yeah. Sequentially. No. I think it was somewhere. It should be somewhere over here page faults because you are loading data. Yeah, read one megabyte sequentially from memory. This is memory data center. One megabyte sequentially, uh, one millisecond. Okay, so we are talking about milliseconds of kind of stuff when there's a page fault. Okay, let me go back to the replacement algorithms again. Okay, this optimal algorithm is optimal but it is not implementable. And these are the names of the page replacement algorithm that we are going to look at. Some of them are for only pedagogical reasons. The others are real algorithms, especially these clock algorithms. Let's look at them, okay? Whatever page replacement algorithm I should have, it should be efficient, okay? 
because when you are doing the page replacements okay or when you are doing the decision to uh, decision uh, for uh, page replacement it should be quick you cannot take half an hour to make that decision okay and it should approximate the correct answer that means that it should be it should be not exactly the same as the optimal algorithm but it should be similar to optimal algorithm it must be implementable on real hardware you cannot make up new hardware stuff because that's that the function is not available okay and we should not forget about the multitasking multi-user systems okay the tools that i have to make this decision we we don't have i mean we are not clueless we have lots of tools okay i can get lots of os uh, bookkeeping information and hardware help okay i have some tools available for it one of them is reference pets remember the reference pet in the tlb also in my page tables so guess again what kind of algorithm would you want for your page replacement i think i would say that if the reference bit is zero for a page and i would replace it first right is that is that correct say something modified bit which one would you replace first okay this is a okay i'm i'm going to give you this this is the reference bit and the modified bit not reference not modified not reference but modified reference but not modified reference and modified there are four possible cases i am looking for a page to replace would you replace line number one two three or four which one would you replace first one one right because nobody has reference to it nobody has modified it so it is thing idle so i would definitely replace one first and then and then what if one is not available all of them are either referenced or modified which one three or two three or two i think two why three since it is used recently there is a chance that i can use it again uh, and if i change it i need to bring it back so this will cost me time but i think we should not touch the uh, modified one so you, you guys are saying that replace three next i think i would replace three next because replacing two is uh, expensive because it is modified i need to write it back right i need to write it to the desk if i am replacing it too that will be more expensive and i think i would replace three next and then i would replace two and then four this referenced and modified bits are available in the hardware hardware the tlb hardware memory management unit hardware modifies these bits modifies these bits when a page is referenced or modified remember the mmu produces the physical address when it produces the physical address it modifies those uh, it modifies those tlb tlb lines they're saying that this page is modified and uh, referenced and etc okay so i have these information available you might think that isn't uh, isn't it expensive to modify these bits uh, while i am accessing the memory but it is done by the hardware it is done by the hardware and it is it is very it is very uh, 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 done it is done very efficiently okay question for you how come a page could be not referenced at all how come this bit could be zero? I don't understand this case. I mean, if a page is in the memory, that means that somebody needed it and I loaded it, right? So it is referenced. 
how could a page be not referenced or not modified? It was referenced long time ago, and now it's not referenced anymore. So who made it zero? Who cleared this bit? When the program exits, the hardware signals when the program exits well when the program exits all the related memory is gone anyway so you don't have to do that uh, it may be a block process instructions a block process a block process yes. doesn't have privilege to access the tlb Look at this one, the next 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 to next to clock interrupts. What's the clock interrupt? Clock interrupt happens 20 times or 50 times or 100 times a second in a system. Okay. With the clock interrupts, what did we do? We do the preemption, right? Previously, we make all those calculations about how much CPU you have used for a process. When the clock interrupt happens, operating system goes to the TLB also the, the 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 page table it clears most of the time it clears all the reference bits if the reference bits are one it makes them all zeros so that means that every time clock interrupt happens okay all the r bits are cleared not all the M, m's are not cleared at all you cannot do that because if a page is modified it is modified i have to write it back to the desk but the R bits are R bits are cleared. They are all made zero. Every clock interrupt. So uh, between two clock interrupts, if R bit becomes one, then that means that somebody is using that. Somebody is using that um, using that uh, page. So the R bit is can become zero. So the clock interrupt is a very important tool for us. Reference bit, modified bit, clock interrupts. Okay, uh, the, the, those are impor important. When the clock interrupt happens, the operating system takes control and it does lots of bookkeeping. One of the things that it does is clearing out these R bits. And then we have the page fault interrupts. Page fault interrupt. If the page fault interrupt happens, okay, I can do some other bookkeeping too. Okay, the page fault interrupt means that I need to do I need to do a swapping right page replacement and the finally is this how about this one advice from the application what does that mean we don't use it much but it is it is suggested by researchers get advice from the application maybe when when application goes out of scope it, it just hints for the operating system oh yeah i don't need this thing you may take it back yeah well it doesn't have to go to out of scope the application might say that i am done with this data this part of the data i am not going to use it anymore so even though i have been using it very frequently even though i modified it and i referenced it a lot i am not going to use it anymore so the operating system definitely knows that it's not going to be used right so so let's look at the algorithms specific algorithms uh, for the replacements okay the optimal algorithm optimal algorithm is is a is a is a theoretical algorithm okay it says that okay this this, this is not implementable on a real hardware or using the software it says that after the program run and it is finished if i had if i had if I had replaced this page and this page and this page and this page at these specific times, this would have been optimal. So you are making these decisions after the program is done. So you are going back and you are making these decisions. Of course, you cannot get, go back through the time. Okay. So if you are doing this, if you are doing this, it is like it is like this. Um, it is like um, let's say this is the this is the okay this is the graph of this is the graph of time 
time versus um, US dollar TL uh, ratio. So if the US dollar is going up and doing this and going up, doing this, going up. So this is 2010 and this is 2020. So looking at this graph, what would you do? At this point, I would sell. At, 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 at this point, okay, I will sell everything and at this point, I will buy lots of them. Sell, buy, sell, buy, right? It is easy to make this decision. This is the optimal one. But what do you need to do? Okay, you need to go back to the time and you make your decisions after seeing this graph. We don't have this graph in our hands. Uh, we didn't have this graph in 2010, right? So I cannot make this decision, but I can compare what I did against this graph. And I can say that in 2010s, my performance was such and such. Optimal algorithm does the same thing too, okay? After the program runs, okay, you will say that if I had replaced this page with this one, and if I had replaced this one and with this one, that would have been optimal. So this is a theoretical replacement algorithm, and we are going to use it as the best algorithm that we can have. So the best is optimal one. Okay. And the worst is somebody has, worst that you can do is the random, right? Who invented this random? Somebody in your, Yasin, was it you? Who invented this random algorithm? Yes, sir. Okay, that was a very good algorithm. So you like to be you like to be between worst and best right and preferably closer to the best you cannot be, you cannot be better than best or you cannot be good, as good as the best and if you are doing any any worse than the worst then your your algorithm is just junk and you like to be above worst okay so with this with these all these tools and all these ideas let's look at the real replacement algorithm, not recently used algorithm. So the, as the name implies, uh, we are trying to replace not recently used pages with the tools in our hand. Okay. So at page fault, system inspect the pages and it looks at the R and M bits, reference and modified bits. I think this is exactly the same as what I wrote before, right? So R and M, it says that class zero pages are not referenced, not modified. Class one is not referenced and modified. Class two is referenced and not modified. Referenced and modified. Okay. So categories of pages based on the current values of the RNM bits. This one says that when the page fault happens, always replace class zero first, then class one, then class two and class three. That's the idea. I think we just did just the opposite, right? I think we, or at least I, I did that way. Class one and class two. Okay, so that's the that's the idea. Not recently used algorithm is does that. Okay, I, I I didn't have to draw it. It is here, and the one important thing is that on clock interrupts always clear the R bits. Okay, at process start time reset all the R and M bits. When the page is loaded, all the R and M bits are cleared and on clock interrupts clear all the orbits on page four discard the random page from the lowest class just a random as as long as it is in class zero because we have we have millions of sometimes no, not millions thousands of pages available in our memory and some of them are class zero some of them class one so replacing class zeros is the best this one says that i am going to replace the modified ones because the simulations show that the simulations show that 
uh, whenever you modify a page uh, a, a memory you are not it is it is possible that you are not going to refer to it anymore okay you are done but if you if you keep reading a memory location that means that you keep reading it more okay so on page fault discard a random page from the lowest class that's called not recently used really this one is not recently used most recently you i mean this is the most recently used one right class three it is both modified and this both modified and um, uh, referenced remember all that information is available in the tlb and in the page tables and tlb is updated by the hardware operating system doesn't update the tlb bits all the time of course it updates the tlb bits and the clock interrupts but during the regular run re regular memory addresses uh, the, this uh, tlb bits are not updated okay so resetting rnm why do we reset the r on each clock interrupt because we want to know if a page has been used recently otherwise all the pages are referenced are modified and we cannot reset m because that page has to be written back to the desk okay best thing properties of nru okay <clears throat> it biased towards the discarding unmodified pages okay but it argues that better to discard a modified page that has not been recently used uh, than that is in use that's the that's the simulation results a simple algorithm it may give adequate performance on some systems but it is not used real in real life so for teaching it is good okay how uh, how about these what is interesting about nru not recently used okay it satisfies all the properties of page replacement algorithm it is efficient it is very fast right it is very fast and it looks for a relatively idle page and it handles the modified pages but it is biased against using them keeping them and it is reasonably efficient okay so we like the properties of this nru but it, it doesn't perform close to the close to the optimal algorithm so we will keep looking at other algorithm okay i think this was someone's idea first and first out let's let's discard let's discard the page that was added last so we need a five for for this and we will keep a data structure and each node will be a page and whenever i receive the new page after a page fault i will add that page at the end of this queue fifo queue and i will keep replacing the the oldest one so this is the oldest uh, page this is the youngest one okay so that's the idea so i am not modifying anything in the tlb right i am not modifying anything in the page table but i am keeping this linked list of pages is this expensive not much why because i only the i only the maintenance of this linked list when there is a page fault okay when there is a page fault or when i have added new pages uh, to my my main memory okay so page faults are expensive anyway loading loading data from the disk is expensive anyway so making a modify modification while doing those is not that expensive okay i think i'm out of time the midterm you are responsible up to this point first in first out okay and uh, uh, study hard and uh, be careful about uh, uh, the answers that you are giving me okay we will try our best 
uh, not to give any opportunity for those people who think that studying is not good for everybody okay we made our notes from our two quizzes and as i said almost 20 percent of the people think that it is okay to uh, it is okay to uh, just copy stuff from the other people other uh, internet sources that's not okay and we will we are taking our precautions about those kind of people and that is my suggestion Okay, good luck, study hard, and I will see you on Monday for the midterm. I will send out sure. this. I will send out the instructions for the midterm in one or two days. Uh, is the midterm more code oriented or uh, more text oriented? It's going to be balanced. You will write some code. You will answer some uh, knowledge questions. You will solve some problems. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Have a nice day. You too.